and they took everything which is a bonus what is up my name is brad and this is operation n64 now if you guys are new to the channel in this series we're trying to build an n64 collection starting off with just 10 pounds by using our charity shops, our car boots, our Facebook marketplace, looking for stuff to cheap that we can sell for a profit to build a game fund to buy N64 bangers. <clears throat> so we left off the last episode with this much in the game fund, and that is where we have remained. Uh, I haven't sold anything on eBay, going through a proper dry patch at the moment. This is the worst it's been since I started this series. Um, I'm hoping things will pick up again soon. I have tried listing stuff elsewhere, like on Facebook Marketplace and whatnot. And I did have a time waster, which kind of annoyed me. Uh, someone wanted to buy all them VHS, them WWE VHS. Uh, so I pulled them off eBay. Uh, he was ready to come and he just didn't turn up. A typical time waster, which is a real shame. I thought that was going to sort of save us this week. But uh, anyway, I'm not too concerned. Like I said, still looking kind of healthy. Still making trades at CX, so the fund is still growing. And uh, it's not till we get down to that nitty gritty and start seeing the pounds and pennies in the uh, in the game fund that I'm going to start worrying. So I'm not too concerned at the moment. Hopefully things will pick up soon. But anyway, having said that, we've got plenty to do this week. I'm finally going to find some time to take all the rejects, all the CEX rejects into a different branch and try my luck. Uh, my parents are down for the week. So I'm hoping to steal like a full day of game hunting with them because my mum loves to hit a charity shop. Uh, so yeah, that's what we're going to get up to this week. So without further ado, let's get into it. So guys, first thing we're going to do this week is trade this stuff in. If you've watched the last couple of episodes, you'll know that I've done a few CEX trades and they've rejected something every single time. So we're going to try my luck at a different one. This is my first opportunity to do so. Uh, fingers crossed they take it. If not, we're gonna to have to try and get our money back on this. I only spent a fiver on it, so hopefully we can sell that for at least a fiver. And then these two will think about what we're gonna do. But I feel confident that they're gonna take the games at least. So let's try luck. So I've just been into CEX and they took everything, which is a bonus. So 38 pound in credit to add to the CEX fund. Uh, awesome. What is up guys? Welcome back to Operation N64. Uh, first place I went this week, I saw this cool Art Attacker annual. Here's one I made earlier. Uh, very cool. 2004 though, man. That seems proper late, but uh, apparently it ran till 2007. And then the most random thing, I saw this kit here. Initially I was like, wow, what's that? It's all signed and that. But apparently this is, an, this is a Netherlands women's handball jersey. I think I was just looking it up on Google and that's apparently what it is. 30 quid they had on it. Signed handball jersey. How random. Tell me if I'm wrong, but I'm sure that's what it is. Uh, I popped out for the day with the parents. Went to Port Albert, did a little bit of game hunting. Uh, a couple of games in this drawer, cut off by my terrible filming skills. But there was nothing to uh, write home about in there. Um, kind of a little look at the plushies here. Always looking at plushies, especially Disney sort of stuff. A four quid for this though, a bit too pricey for me. Uh, they had another one here, Sadness, I believe. They're from Inside Out. My daughters used to love that film, but uh, they don't watch it anymore. But they used to watch it like five times a day. That's how I know the characters. Um, and there was a couple of games in this one. Uh, I checked all the cases to see if there's any hidden gems because uh, all the games on display just, just weren't worth picking up. Um, but yeah, cool to see some games, but unfortunately nothing worth picking up in here. And then I saw this dinosaur, uh, Jurassic World, uh, Indominus Rex, I think they say it. And I've been watching a whole bunch of Masters, or Master of Pieces, and he picks up stuff like this all the time. So I thought I might take a risk on it. I need to branch out. I need to start looking at different stuff. So yeah, I definitely had a look at this. And speaking of different stuff, uh, football boots, trainers, and that sort of thing, I'm going to try and try and do a bit more research on. Uh, these Adidas Predators might have been worth picking up, but on closer inspection, like the front, the, the front of the boot was like peeling away, and I know that that uh, it's not worth picking up then because they're on their way out. But uh, if 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 they weren't if they weren't peeling away, I definitely would have picked these up because there's a good like possible twenty pound in uh, profit right there. And then while I was in Port I had to had to had to pop to one of my favourite shops ever, Retro Stash, awesome shop.
absolutely love that shop. I couldn't walk out empty handed, so I picked something up. Uh, I then saw this Simon Says, and I thought it was kind of along the same lines as a bop it. And I've seen a few boys on YouTube selling their bop it's all the time uh, for a decent little bit of profit. Unfortunately, Simon Says didn't have any profit in it. But then I saw this cryogenic, it's like a pop culture shop, a lot of Pokemon cards, uh, game related statues, a lot of anime and manga stuff. A uh, very cool shop, lots of pop Funko Pops in there. Um, all new stuff, nothing uh, and nothing to pick up, you know, to try and sell on or nothing that I'm really looking for. But still a very cool shop. I did ask him about the uh, the standees he had in the window. He had like some Pokemon card sort of standees. I asked him if, if they were available. And he did say like when he gets new ones in, he does tend to like sell them off. So I'd keep coming back and maybe maybe I'll be able to get one off him. So I'm definitely going to pop back in for that reason. And then on the way home, there was a bunch of games in this charity shop where there's never any games. It's a whole bunch of PS3 games and a couple worth picking up as well. In really good condition. They must have all come from the same collector or something. So I had a look for all these games, checked if there was any worth picking up for trade or for sale. And the pick of the bunch was this Blitz the League 2. Unfortunately, the disc wasn't in there, but don't worry, guys. I checked all the cases and I found it. Uh, I also checked the toys in here. They've been getting a whole bunch of new stuff in here all the time. Because it's one of the local charity shops in and amongst the like, housing estates, uh, I think the people just like run stuff down the road. It's just really convenient for people to donate to. Uh, so, yeah, great little charity shop right on my doorstep. Uh, a couple plushies in here, game related. You know me, I'm always going to pick up game related plushies. It's, it's just I just, it's just a no brainer for me. I'm always going to pick them up, whether I sell them on or keep them for the collection or whatever. Uh, they're definitely going to be picked up by me. And then I saw this like a funny looking Luigi. This is definitely not official, it kind of looks knockoff to me, or like a prize from like a, a claw machine or something. Uh, but I had to pick it up. Come on, man. It's Luigi. Again, I'm checking the toys. Uh, I really want to explore that market a little bit more. Uh, I think there's definitely profit to be made, uh, especially with the like, reselling of video games becoming such a saturated market now. I think the toys, clothes, shoes and that sort of thing are definitely something that I have to start looking more into. I then found this uh, Coraline Blu-ray. Keep an eye out for these guys, especially this time of year. Uh, there's a little bit of trading value with these. Uh, so yeah, definitely keep your eyes out. And any Coraline games as well have some decent value. Uh, a Bop It here, unfortunately this one didn't have any value in it. The, the original Bop It's, I think they're the ones to look out for. They're the ones with a good like 15 possibly uh, 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 profit in. And then I saw this annual, you know me and annuals, love me an annual. Pink Panther, not really my thing, but uh, nice to see a 1973 Pink Panther annual. Very cool. I then popped into another charity shop. This place tends to be quite expensive. A Star Trek annual in there from 86. A few Simpsons annuals. My obsession with annuals is uh, it's becoming a bit of a problem. Uh, Pokemon ones here. This I wasn't too sure on. I'm wacky animals or something, I don't know. But then there was a cool Judge Dread one here. Very, very cool for 91. But five pound, five pound, I'm, I'm just not paying it. A couple more 2000 AD ones, uh, three quid I think they had on that. And very cool covers, but the three quid, five quid, I, I, I'm not going near it for, for that sort of price. And I don't know what it was, maybe because I went in on a Saturday, but there was games in the shops that just don't normally have them. Maybe it's a thing charity shops do is they hold on to maybe better stock for the weekend because they're going to get more people in. Uh, maybe they'll think they make more sales, so they hold on to better stuff, I don't know. Or maybe I was just lucky that, that this occasion there was games out on display. Uh, a couple of steelbooks here. Unfortunately, my phone died. 
uh, £2.50. Should I have picked these up? I couldn't look them up and check. I still book, so I probably should have. But uh, but my phone died, so I couldn't check, so I didn't. Uh, possible schoolboy error. And we are back in the game space, and I'm actually really happy with how this week has went. Uh, regardless of not making any sales, uh, I picked up a few bits and pieces to try and sell on. We managed to go into Retro Stash. I absolutely love that shop. If you guys are ever in the area, you should definitely check them out. I'll stick all his information below. Absolutely love that shop. The owner's a top lad. He done me a deal on something. I'll show you guys later. Uh, but yeah, picked up a few bits and pieces. And then also... We took all them rejects to CEX and they took them all. Uh, just goes to show, don't give up on the first occasion. Try a different branch, you never know. And they took everything. They took the DVD player. They took that Wii, uh, uh, Mario for the Wii. And they also took that Forza 5, I think it was, for the Xbox One. So that's a grand total, I think, £38 that we can add to the CEX fund. So the fund is still growing. We've gone above the £100 mark now, I believe. I'm trying to get over 200 quid so we can get that Conker's Bad Fur Day because it's a very pricey game. That would be nice to knock the most expensive game off the list. Um, but anyway, we spent a total of £8 on stuff to try and sell so we can deduct that from the game fund. Um, yeah, like I said, not, I didn't pick up a load of stuff, but I'll show you what I did pick up. So just the two games this week, I picked up... Uh, Blitz, the League 2. Now, from the footage, you could see that the case was empty initially, uh, but I checked all the PS3 games, and it was just inside another case. So we've got a completed copy of Blitz, the League 2. Uh, it's like a £10 game. I think they give you, like, £6 trade-in. So not too bad. Keep an eye out. I would have never known. Yeah, Blitz, the League 2. And the other game is this Guitar Hero Greatest Hits. Now, I've sold this before. It has dropped in value. I think they give you £5 trade-in for it. Uh, I think it's worth, like, 8 quid. But yeah, always, always, always good to pick this up. And then just the one Blu-ray is that Coraline 3D. And I was watching Mitch this morning, I think it was, that retro rummage. And he was saying that closer to like Halloween and stuff, this could sort of spike a little bit, go up in price. Um, yeah, so keep an eye out for these. At the moment, I think it's trading in for like three or four quid, the 3D one, the Blu-ray. Uh, I'm not quite sure, but there's definitely a bit of trade in here. I think I paid 50 pence for it. No, 30 pence for it. So not too bad at all. Now, I picked up a bunch of plushies. Now, a couple of them, I think, a bootleg. We'll start off with this funny-looking Luigi. Now, I picked this up for jokes. I don't know if I'll be able to sell it on. Uh, he looks a bit funny-looking. There's no tag that says made in China. There's nothing to say it is like Nintendo official or anything. But I had to pick it up because it's uh, Luigi. It's kind of janky-looking. Maybe my kids will stick it on their backpack or something. Uh, but, yeah, Luigi... <laughs> I picked up these uh, Sonic, I, th I don't know what you call them, like they, they like hang off your window, like all the suction things hang off your window. You've got Shadow here, again there's no tag to say that it's like official Sega or anything, uh, just again says made in China. Um, I don't know, it might be worth something to someone, I don't know, we could try our luck. But I picked up two of them, picked up a Knuckles one as well, both uh, stick to your windows in your car maybe, or, or in your bedroom or something. I'll bundle them together, maybe try and push my luck for like, Eight to ten quid for the pair. I don't know. And then the last one is... <laughs> this is like Sonic the Hedgehog official, I believe. It's from the movie. It's the janky looking uh, Sonic. But it's got the Sonic the Hedgehog right there. The movie. Uh, I swear to God they changed the look on this before they released the film. Am I wrong or am I right? This is weird looking. But I had to pick it up. I think I made 50p a piece for these. So yeah. Funny looking Sonic. And then the last thing I picked up is a bit of a experiment. I've been watching a ton of Master of Pieces. Ian over at Master of Pieces. Cracking channel. I'm learning a ton from him. If you guys haven't checked him out, I'll stick his links below. Great channel. Um, I'm learning a ton from him because he's a part-time reseller and he sells all sorts. So it's got me like looking elsewhere. Uh, kind of like learning what to look out for sort of thing. So anyway, I picked up this in, in, in Dominus. In Dominus. How do you say it? Idominus, Idominus Rex, I think that's how you say it. It is official Jurassic World. You can see the stamp on the foot there. Um, it does need a change of batteries. The arms move, but the jaw does not move on its own. Uh, it might need me like tinkering around with it, or it might be a complete fail, or I might be able to sell it as like, you know, broken for like a tenner. I paid three quid for it. Um, yeah, but I need to change the batteries out. This is definitely an experiment for me. He sells a ton of stuff like this. Toys might be the way forward a little bit because games, the game market is just saturated so much that 
I'm just not selling anything. So I'm going to try and look elsewhere. And like I said, Master of Pieces, Ian, is uh, teaching me a hell of a lot. So yeah, I picked up this Dominus Rex. I think that's how you say it. Jurassic World toy. He's a good size on him. Um, working ones, I'm seeing go for like 25 to 30 on eBay. So maybe a broken one. If I can get a tenner for it, I'll be chuffed. And if it sells quickly, I'll be even more uh, happy. But yeah, this is an experiment. But kind of cool. Dominus Rex. And that is everything we picked up to try and sell on. Not a great deal of stuff, but I'm really happy with how this week has gone. We did a bit of game hunting. Uh, we got, to, got rid of all that stuff in CEX, which was a bonus. And I also got to go into Retro Stash. Absolutely love that shop. Um, I always try and go in there whenever I'm nearby. If you guys are ever in the area, make sure you hit the place up. It's fantastic. The owner is an absolute legend. I will stick all the details down below if you want to check it out. Uh, but while I'm in there, I can never walk out empty-handed. I had to buy something. And I was looking through his N64 games. And unfortunately, there was none on the list that I didn't already have. But there were a couple of games or at least one game that I wanted to pick up that wasn't on the list. Now, I'm not going to deduct it from the game fund because it's not a listed game. But I don't want to get ahead of myself. But I'm thinking in the future, I want to try and go for a full set of N64 completing box. Might be... <laughs> Might be taking on a bit much there, might be by shooting myself in the foot there, but I think after I finish this series, I'm just going to continue picking them up to try and get a full set. And uh, when I wrote the list, it was like pushing like 60 games, and I thought that's a bit unrealistic for me. I wanted to keep the list down to like, a, like an achievable amount, and I thought 2025 was achievable for me, uh, especially doing this for the first time. Uh, so yeah, but this game I picked up definitely would have been on there. It would have been like number 26. Um, I love games like this. He's uh, a staple character for Nintendo. So I had to pick it up. And that game is Yoshi's Story. Now this is a side-scrolling platformer. I'll read the synopsis on the back. Baby Bowser has taken the super happy tree and cast a spell on Yoshi's world, turning it into the pages of a picture book. The only Yoshis not affected by the spell were six hatchlings that were still protected by their shells. It's up to them to reclaim the super happy tree and restore happiness to the world. That is the only way they can break Baby Bowser's spell. Sounds fantastic. This is my cup of tea, definitely. It might be one of the first games I'm going to play once the N64 is all set up. But yeah, like I said, this would have been game number 26 on the list. 100%. Love games like this. And uh, they did me a, a solid deal in there. I can't thank them enough. Uh, but yeah, cracking game to add to the collection. Now, I'm not going to deduct this from the game fund because it's not one of the 25. But like I said, I think I'm going to go for a full set eventually so to have to pick up games like this uh it's super nice condition i will open it up for you now the box is in great nick there's a few like minor things here but i'm gonna take around nicky's and we're gonna try this uh like a uh, pen that he's got that he's sort of touch up the blackness i won't touch up anything else but maybe a little bit of black here you could touch up with this pen he has but anyway let's open it up so we have the manual here looking at super minty nice colorful colored manual it also has the uh, obviously the like a uh, safety leaflet i think that's what we're calling it got a registration card in here your chance to win the latest prizes of software in our free prize draw from nintendo the game's limited look at that that's mad that, that is still in there what the hell it's like a weird questionnaire about how many hours a week do you watch the following channels bbc one bbc two approximately how many hours a week do you spend playing video games what makes a good game? How many cars are there in your household? What a random questionnaire. Proper intrusive. What is the approximate family income? Jesus. Talk about trying to steal your information. But anyway, that's all there. The car is in super good condition. Very, very happy. I wouldn't expect anything less from them. So yeah, great to add this to the collection. Like I said, I'm not going to knock it off the list or put it on the shelf. I'm going to stick this with all the N64 games I had before I started Operation N64. I had about seven or eight CIB games already. But I you know, I'm st I started from scratch for this series. Uh, so this will go along, go, go in the collection with them. Until the games room's up and running, we'll have a designated space for all N64 games. But yeah, very happy to add this. I'm hoping next week um, to maybe pick off another game. We'll see. But I'm still trying to build that CEX fund up uh, as I'm not making any sales at the moment. But anyway, we will be back at it next week as we always are. And as always, guys, I love to hear your feedback. I love to know that if you're enjoying this or not. So smash that like button if you are. Uh, consider subscribing to the channel if you'd like to. And as always, be rad, stay rad, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.